Hello everyone, and welcome back to Revit Snippets. Great tips you can learn in just a few minutes. In today's lesson, we we'll use Revit to recreate this feature wall system over here. It contains 3D triangular panels, which we will also apply different materials in Revit to give a more interesting effect. The whole system is, of course, fully customizable in Revit. You can take panels out, you can change materials, you can have more or less panels, and you can size them accordingly as well. Now, before we begin, if you are new to this channel, make sure you subscribe to the channel now so you can get tutorials like this coming to you every single day. Alright, let's get started. Let's go to File New and choose to make a new family. We can start from this template here, Curtain Panel Pattern Based. Now, you need to select this blue grid there. That's a base grid for your panel pattern. And then change the pattern from Rectangle to Rhomboid. This one here. You can see it changes in layout accordingly. We need to now draw the skeleton for our panel. To make it easier, I will hide this base grid for a moment. Let's do hide element. And now we only have on screen the four base lines for our panel. Let's connect point one and two with a single line. Select them like this and do spline through points. We can now change this line to a reference line. Ticking the box here, we do that. You know it's reference when it's green and it has those other planes around it, like this. Let's go to the top view. Now if we look at the panel system we're trying to recreate, you can see now that each panel here is a regular triangle. And the center point of that triangle will be raised up and then connected to its edges to form those 3D surfaces that looks very interesting. So the first step now is to obtain this center point for our panels. Let's go back to Revit and lay out a few construction lines for that purpose. I will now activate the point tool and make sure I will place them on face like that. And now we need one point here, one point there, another one here, and the last one there. Escape now, I can now select all of them and change their normalized curve parameter to 0.5. That will ensure they will be always at the midpoints of their host lines. We can now connect them to other base points from the beginning like this. Select this point for example, and select the opposite point of it on this triangle. We can now do spline through points, and then repeat this step three more times. So two, three times and four times. We can now select them like this or four lines we just created and make them reference lines as well. Next step is to draw our actual centers for those two triangles. Let's go back to the point two again, still drawing on face, but this time instead of four, I only need two more points. So one here and one there. If I zoom in to the first one, for example, I can see that it's now hosted on this diagonal line. But for it to be the center of this triangle, I'll need it to be right there, where this line intersects with this line. To do so, I need to have the point selected like this, and select host points by intersection. Now I can select the other line, this one here. And as you can see now, this center point is now exactly where those two lines intersect, right there. We can do the same now for this second point underneath. So select it, host by intersection, and then select the other line. Perfect. To make sure it's working, I can now unhide the grid, select it, and change one of the two dimensions to something else. Maybe this one can be now 4 meters to 100. And you can see now, that will always be the center point of this first triangle and this will be always the center point of the second triangle below. So far so good, let's select this grid and hide it again. By element, we can now orbit the view and raise those two center points up to create the 3D effect for our panels. The trick here is not to raise themselves. Let's now place two more points, this time on reference planes. We can now set the first plane to be the horizontal plane along this point. Press tap a few times until you see something like this highlighted up. Once you have selected the new reference plane, 
place the new point right on top of the previous one. This warning will come up saying that you have identical points in the same place. That's fine. We are doing this on purpose. So let's dismiss this. Set the work plane one more time. This time I want to pick the horizontal plane along this other point, that one there. And just like with the other one, I can now drop the new point right on top of a previous one. And then dismiss the warning. I will now select these two points and connect them again with the reference line. Repeat the same step here. New point connecting to point number four. These two lines, I can now make them reference lines. They are selected now. I can also select this line here between point four and point three and then make form from that selection. You can either make an extrusion like this or just a surface. We have to go now for the surface. Here we go. Now I think you're getting the idea. We need to do this five more times to get two more services here and three more services there. Let me do this quickly. Here we go. Now we have the top faces or front faces of our two panels. Now it's a good time for us to make in here a new parameter to control the thickness of our panels. We want to control how much this point and this other one are offset from the horizontal plane. So I can now select them both like this and make this offset parameter into something I can control. Let's call this center offset. And now when I go to family types, if I change this to be something bigger, you can see they are raising accordingly like this. At the moment, our surfaces have zero thickness. We need something here at the base to make it look like a proper 3D panel. So I will select these three edges and make a new form from them. This time we're going for the extrusion and make sure it's extruding down like so. The same goes for this other one. Let's select the three boundary lines, create form to make an extrusion and then bring it down like this. I can now select both back panels and get this parameter into something I can control. Let's call this one back panel thickness. The final step in this curtain panel family is this. We need to now select this first panel along with its top triangular faces and assign a new parameter to control this whole collection's material. Let's call this one panel one. And we can now do the same for panel number two. So get the back panel, get the top faces, and call this parameter panel number two. Okay, we cannot try to use this panel in the proper system. Let's go to new conceptual mass. Metric mass, that's a template you can use. And now I just draw a quick line from here going 10 meters away, like that. And quickly just extrude it up into a surface like this. We can now select the newly created surface and do divide surface. Now we can change the pattern as well from no pattern to rhomboid, the one we chose before, remember? The triangles, they look a bit skewed, so let's change those two numbers to make them more realistic. This can be now 12 and this one can be 50. You see now they look kind of like regular panels just like we need. I can now go back to the panel family and load this into my mass family, family 4. We can now select a system and set it to use the new family we just made, family 3 in this case. You can see at the perimeter these panels are getting a bit crazy. So let's change border tile parameter to empty. 
Here we go. They have the same materials for now, but I will change in the project. For now I'm more concerned about this thickness of the back panel that looks a bit much. So let's select this first panel there and change this to be maybe minus 25. There we go. Now let's test it out in the project. Go to new project now. Go to the 3D view and load our mass family family 4 into that new project, project number 2. You can now place it anywhere, maybe I'll put it here. Turn on shaded mode and you can see we're almost there. Let's now select one of those panels here and set its parameters. We can see now that you have two parameters for materials. Let's go to panel 1 there and do something like a timber material for this one. Because I haven't got one here, let me just duplicate this default parameter and call this timber. Go to the appearance tab now and use this replace asset button. That will take me straight to the material library. I can now go to Autodesk Physical Assets under the Wood group. And probably this one we do for now, Cherry. I can now double click on it to select it. You can see now it's loaded. If I go to graphics now, I can now change this render appearance to use the same color we have in the material appearance. Click OK now. For panel number two, let's use something brighter. Something like this default form material. That's bright enough for me. Click OK now. And straight away, you have two materials for your system. Now, if you go back to the other example I showed at the beginning, you can see now some panels that have the timber bit on top, like that one there, and some panels that have the timber bit at the bottom, like this one here. That will create a much more interesting effect. So let's do it here in our new file. To do so, I need to go back to my mass family and then the panel family. There's a small problem though. If you remember, we created those two materials in our project. So if I now go back to my mass family, the materials are not here. To make them appear here, I need to do a simple trick. Let me close this mass family down without saving it. And I will also close this family for the panel down. Also without saving it. Don't worry, we don't lose anything because they are both loaded into here, into our project file. But if I now go and select this mass family and do edit family. Go to 3D view a bit. You can see straight away that it has my materials coming along. Just a little trick to get those materials in here quickly. So I can now also select the panel here and edit its family as well. And voila, if I now go to shade it, you can see the materials are there. That's quite neat. So we need to now make two types for this family. One type with the timber bit on top and one other type with a timber bit on the opposite side. Let's go to the family types window. Make a new type, call this type 1. That will be what we see here already. Apply this to accept. And then you can create type 2 as well. Click OK. For this type, we can now swap these two parameters value. So I will copy this here, paste it there. And for the last one, I just change that to now timber. Apply now. And you can see now that's the second type we need. We can now load this whole family into the mass family again, family 4. Overwrite everything and the parameters values. And now, if I now select one of the panels and do isolate category, I can now pick on some of them like this, just randomly. And then change them to be type 2. And you can see, the material has changed for those panels that I selected. You can also take away some panels to make the system more dynamic. Usually I prefer to do that at the edges, so it looks like I have a full system in the middle and it kind of fades away and breaks away along the edges like this. Once you have selected the panels you don't want to keep, just press delete. 
And here we go. I can then load this whole thing back into my project. And there you have it. The same system we saw at the beginning. And because we have set up the parameters, you can also now select one of those panels. Go to edit type and change it back panel thickness and center offsets accordingly. So if I want this to be a bit less, I can try 25 and maybe minus 50 for this thicker back panel. Here we go, straight away. If you like more tutorials like this every single day coming to you, make sure to subscribe to this channel. For now, practice doing this and I'll see you in the next lesson.